Okay, this is still uh, day seven. I'm doing the second half. Uh, it says the Doppler radar in San Angelo, Texas, can show winds going to the radius 150 miles from the radar site. It says how much area can the Doppler radar cover along with the nearest line? The nearest point. Line. So, I want to know the area, and if you see the word radius, then obviously uh, we're going to be talking about a circle. And so we need the formula for the area of the circle. Okay. The area of the circle is pi times radius squared. Or, well, not or, we're just going to expand this. This means pi times radius times radius, not radius times 2. So this would be wrong. It's not radius times 2. So please remember that. That's a no-no. It's radius times radius. And it's telling you that the, the radius is uh, 150 miles. So you, you can see from here, there's the center, and there's the outside, and that's the radius. Okay. It's not going all the way across to the other end. It's starting from the center to the outside, so that's the radius. So my radius is 150 miles. And so all you got to do is input it here, and for pi, for pi, since we're going to round it and we're going to get a muscle mental center, uh, for pi we can use uh, 3. Normally we can also, we can, uh, pi would be 3. But for this case, I mean, for most, for most problems, you can use pi as 3, and it'll get you roughly really close to the end. And so, let's do that and we'll do Remember, I can do this and do this. Number seven there. Uh, students in a PE class created a large circle that was 34 meters in diameter. So which measurement is the closest to the circumference of the circle? Okay, so then we have a circle here. We have a perfect circle that I did right here. And so now I look at it, and it has a diameter of 34. So that means that my line has to be, let's say this is the center, my line has to go all the way across and touch the center. So it must go from one end to the other side of the circle and cross the center. That's my diameter. So we're saying that's 34. So my diameter is 34. So what is the closest, and this is a close, that means muscle memory. So again, when you see the word closest, then pi, you can use 3. Normally, pi is 3.14. You'll see that all the time. But if you see the word closest, we, we're looking at approximation. Okay? We want to get close, nearest. And so, muscle memory. So, pi is 3. And so now, what is the equation for the circumference of the circle? Well, the circumference is equal to pi times that. That's all you got to do. You put the numbers that they need to be. And you get that. Number 8 there. Alexander set, uh, set up the following expression to solve. Uh, what is Alexander trying to find? Well, a key, uh, some key information here is that 3.14, which is pi, so pi is equal to 3.14, is only used in circles. Okay, so only used in circles. We don't use 3.14 for a rectangle, triangle, none of those, only for circles. So then you look at your choices there. Uh, it's not used, remember, only in circles, nothing else. And so you got to look there. Okay, I can eliminate a few of them just knowing that. And then also, pi is used in two equations for circles. It's used for circumference equals pi times diameter, or it's also used when we find area, it's pi times radius squared. So, you know, hopefully you can figure out what the answer is. Just remember, 3.14 is only used in circles. And then the 3.4 is used in the circumference of a circle. To find the circumference of a circle, we use pi times diameter. To find the area of a circle, we use pi times radius squared. So, think about it. Uh, 
Suzanne wants to have a sign made for her new coffee shop that has a circumference of 1.5 meters. What is the approximate diameter of her sign? Approximate means to me, más o menos. It tells me that for pi, I don't have to use 3.14, I can use 3. So pi, we wanted to get an exact answer, a really close 3.14. But I want to approximate three. I want to make it easy as I can for myself. Why deal with this? And so we want to find the, the circumference. He's already given it to me. We want to know the diameter. So the equation for circumference is this: pi times lambda. And so now he wants you to find the approximate diameter. So if you want the circumference, you do pi times lambda. But it's giving you the, the circumference. Telling you it's 1.5. So our circumference is equal to 1. So that means that this is actually 1.5. And do we know what pi is? Yes, we do. We said approximately, más o menos, so we're going to use 3. So then, what, what it's saying is 3 times what gives you 1.5? 3 times what? Well, 3 times one of these. 3 times one of those will give you 1. You can either multiply or divide. It says uh, find the volume of each figure below. It's giving you the numbers to use, like A is 3 centimeters, so A is 3, uh, B is 4, and C is 5. All you have to remember is the equation. This is a prism. Volume equals A is the height. This is a pyramid. Volume equals A is the base times the height divided by 3. This is a triangular uh, prism. Volume equals A is the base times the height. Just remember, you know, it's the missing piece there, so you can see what it looks like. Um, there's, you know, we already did examples of this triangular prism. We did an example of a rectangular pyramid, and we've done a a rectangular prism, like those cubes that we're doing. So look at the other problems that we did in this. I'm sure you'll solve this. Uh, also for this one, find the area of circumference of the circle. Okay? The area formula is pi times radius squared, and the circumference is pi times ten. So remember, first write down here, okay, what do we give you? Do we give me the radius? Do we give me the diameter? We need to find the other one. And good luck. Hopefully uh, this has helped you.